Hi there. Today in our literacy lesson we're going to be doing a little bit of reading. We're going to be introduced to a new Roald Dahl text. So our objective today is to read and understand a novel text. And to be successful in today's lesson we're going to see if we can first of all use our phonics to help us read aloud. We're going to see if we can uh, use a range of different strategies to help us read, even when we can't use phonics. We're going to see if we can find keywords using our skimming and scanning techniques. And we're going to see if we can give evidence to support our answers. So we're going to be looking at this text here. This is one of my favourite Roald Dahl books, it's called Matilda. And we're going to be reading an extract from pages 4 to 7 of the book. And on the back of the book, you've got a blurb which tells you a little bit about what the book is going to be about. I put it on my screen here and I'm just going to read it to you now. It says, Matilda Wormwood's father is a mean, crooked crook. And her mother's just plain stupid. They think Matilda is a nuisance who should watch more TV and read fewer books. But her lovely teacher, Miss Honey, thinks Matilda is a genius. Matilda has a few extraordinary tricks up her sleeve, so her horrible parents and even more horrible headmistress better watch out. We're going to read an extract from this text now, and then we're going to see if we can answer some questions about it together. Occasionally, one comes across parents who take the opposite line, who show no interest in, at all in their children, and these, of course, are far worse than the doting ones. Mr and Mrs Wormwood were two such parents, they had a son called Michael and a daughter called Matilda, and the parents looked upon Matilda in particular as nothing more than a scab. A scab is something that you have to put up with until the time comes when you can pick it off and flick it away. Mr and Mrs Wormwood looked forward enormously to the time that they could pick their little daughter off and flick her away, preferably into the next country or even further than that. It is bad enough when parents treat ordinary children as though they were scabs on bunions but becomes somehow a lot worse when the child in question is extraordinary, and by that I mean sensitive and brilliant. Matilda was both of these things, but above all, she was brilliant. Her mind was so nimble, and she was so quick to learn that her ability should have been obvious even to the most half-witted of parents. But Mr and Mrs Wormwood were both so gormless and so wrapped up in their own silly little lives that they failed to notice anything unusual about their daughter. To tell the truth, I doubt they'd have even noticed had she crawled into the house with a broken leg. Matilda's brother Michael was a perfectly normal boy, but the sister, as I said, was something to make your eyes pop. By the age of one and a half, her speech was perfect, perfect and she knew as many words as most grown-ups. The parents, instead of applauding her, called her a noisy chatterbox and told her sharply that small girls should be seen and not heard. By the time she was three, Matilda had taught herself to read by studying newspapers and magazines that lay around the house. At the age of four, she could read fast and well, and, was and she naturally began hankering after books. The only book in the whole of this enlightened household was something called Easy Cooking, belonging to her mother, and when she had read that from cover to cover, and had learnt all the recipes by heart, she decided she wanted something more interesting. Daddy, she said, do you think you could buy me a book? A book, he said. What do you want a flaming book for? To read, Daddy. What's wrong with the telly, for heaven's sake? We've got a lovely telly with a 12-inch screen, and now you come asking for a book? You're getting spoiled, my girl. Nearly every weekday afternoon, Matilda was left alone in her house. Her brother, five years older than her, went to school. Her father went to work, and her mother went out playing bingo in a town eight miles away. Mrs Wormwood was hooked on bingo and played it five afternoons a week. On the afternoon of the day when her father had refused to buy her a book, Matilda set out all by herself to walk to the public library in the village. When she arrived, she, was introduced, she introduced herself to the librarian, Mrs Phelps. She asked if she might sit a while and read a book. Mrs Phelps, slightly taken aback from the arrival of such a tiny girl, unaccompanied by a parent, nevertheless told her she was very welcome. Where are the children's books, please? Matilda asked. They're over there on the lower shelves, Mrs Phelps told her. Would you like me to help you find a nice one with lots of pictures in it? No, thank you, said Matilda. I'm sure I can manage. From then on, every afternoon, as soon as her mother had left for bingo, Matilda would toddle down to the library. The walk only took ten minutes, and this allowed her two glorious hours sitting quietly by herself in a cosy corner, devouring one book after another. When she had read every single children's book in the place, she began wandering round in search of something else. Mrs Phelps, who had been watching her with fascination for a few weeks, now got up from her desk and went over to her. Can I help you, Matilda? she asked. 
I'm wondering what to read next, Matilda said. I've finished all the children's books. You mean you've looked at all the pictures? Yes, but I've read the books as well. Mrs Phelps looked down at Matilda from her great height, and Matilda looked right back up at her. I thought some were very poor, Matilda said, but others were lovely. I liked the secret garden best of all. It was full of mystery. The mystery of the room behind the closed door and the mystery of the garden behind the big wall. Mrs Phelps was stunned. Exactly how old are you, Matilda? she asked. Four years and three months, Matilda said. Mrs Phelps was more stunned than ever, but she had a sense not to show it. What sort of book would you like to read next? she asked. Matilda said, I would like a really good one that grown-ups read, a famous one. I don't know any names. Okay, so now we've read that extract together, we're going to have a go at seeing if we can answer some questions about this part of the text here. So, I've got the text on the screen. Remember to make the screen bigger to make sure you can see it all. And the first question I want you to find the answer to says, what did Matilda use to teach herself how to read? So we're looking probably for teach or taught or um, learned. We're looking for one of those words to probably help us answer that question there. Oh, I found the word taught. Have you found it? By the time she was three, Matilda had taught herself to read by studying newspapers and magazines. So what did she use? Newspapers and magazines. I hope you got that one. Let's move on to the second question. What was the only book in Matilda's house called? So we're looking for a title of a book, and if you're looking for a title of something, a proper noun, you're looking for capital letters to start the name of it. So have a look through, see if you can find any words with capital letters that might be the name of the book. I found it. Have you found it? Let's read the sentence. The only book in the whole of this enlightened household was something called Easy Cooking, belonging to her mother. So the only book was called Easy Cooking. Let's look at the final question together. Is Matilda unusual? Why do you think this? So you can use what we've read already together and you can use what's in the text here to see if you can work out whether you think Matilda is unusual. And if you think that she is, why? If you think that she isn't, why? Remember to give that evidence from the text. If I was answering this question, I would say, I think Matilda is unusual because most children can't read everything by the age of four. Some children have started to learn to read when they're four years old, but they certainly won't be able to read as much as she can, especially easy cooking and then learning that recipe off by heart at four years old. I think that's very unusual. Okay, let's go on to what our task is today. Today, I'd like you to go to DB Primary and download the text and the questions about an extract from Matilda. And remember, don't forget to use evidence to support your answers from the text. When you finish that, come back here and we'll do our self-assessment together. Okay, so our objective today was to read and understand a novel text. Presentation and effort, you can self-assess. How well have you done with your presentation and your effort in today's writing? And for your next step, do you need to practice using your phonics to help you read a little bit better? Do you need to find a range of other strategies to help you read when the word is unfamiliar? Do you need to develop your skimming and scanning skills, finding those key words really quickly like I did in the text? Or do you need to learn how to give evidence to support your answer? If you think you've got a different next step, then feel free to write that yourself, but make sure you work on it next time you do a reading activity. Well done for today's lesson, everybody.